God bless everyone. Today is 1 Samuel 28, Thursday, December 31st, 2020, 12-31-20. <clears throat> Yesterday we read 1 Samuel 27, and it talked about David among the Philistines. Alright, today's a crazy reading, like, deep and just like crazy talking about you'll see it's kind of crazy but it shows that there's people that talk to the dead like that's a real thing and stuff like that like, I'm gonna have to bring up some uh, dictionary definitions too because alright 1 Samuel 28 in those days, the Philistines gathered their forces to fight against Israel. Achish said to David, You must understand that you and your men will accompany me in, in the army. David said, Then you will see for yourself what your servant can do. Achish replied, Very well, I will make you my bodyguard for life. Saul and the medium and the medium at Endor. Now Saul or now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in his own town of Ramah. Saul had expelled the mediums and spiritists from the land. The Philistines assembled and came and set up camp at Sh at Shunem. While Saul gathered all Israel and set up camp at Gil Gilboa, when Saul saw the Philistine army, he was afraid. Terror filled his heart. He inquired of the Lord, but the Lord did not answer him by dreams or Urim or prophets. All right, so I seen this. I seen, so the Lord's not answering him. In the, all right, so. Urim, I looked up, the Lord didn't answer him by dreams or Urim or prophets. And Urim is capitalized. You know how God's capitalized and like Lord and all that? When it's like God, if it's not talking about the actual God, if it's talking about false gods, it's lowercase. So every time it's uppercase, it means something. So I looked up what Urim meant. And then Urim is uh, two objects of a now unknown nature. Possibly used for divination, worn on the breastplate of a Jewish high priest. All right, and then so I looked up divination, and divination is the practice of seeking knowledge of the future or the unknown by su supernatural means. See, so there's like some supernatural stuff like going on right here. So he didn't answer him by Urim or prophets or anything like that. So the Lord's not answering him. Saul then said to his attendants, Find me a woman who is a medium, so I may go and inquire of her. Alright, under questions, my questions, I highlighted Urim. So I looked it up to see what that was, and I highlighted medium under my questions because I didn't know what it meant. But I looked it up, and medium, a medium is a person claiming to be in contact with the spirits of the dead. And to communicate between the dead and the living. See, so that's a real thing. Alright. Find me a woman who is a medium, so I may go and inquire of her. There is one in Endor, he said. They said. So Saul disguised himself, putting on other clothes. And that night, he and two men went to the woman. Consult a spirit for me, he said. And bring up for me the one I name. But the woman said to him, Surely you know what Saul has done. He has cut off the mediums and spiritists from the land. Why have you set a trap for my life to bring about my death? Saul swore to her by the Lord, As surely as the Lord lives, you will not be punished for this. Then the woman asked, Whom shall I bring up for you? Bring up Samuel, he said. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out at the top of her voice and said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, Don't be afraid. What do you see? 
The woman said, I see a ghostly figure coming up out of the earth. What does he look like? She, he asked. An old man wearing a robe is coming up, she said. Then Saul knew it was Samuel, and he bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? All right, so now he's talking to Samuel. Samuel died, and now he's talking to his spirit. His spirit came up, and he's actually talking to his spirit. Dead Samuel's dead. He brought him up to talk to him. Crazy. I am in great distress, Saul said. The Philistines are fighting against me, and God has sep and God has departed from me. He no longer answers me either by prophets or by dreams. All right, under interesting, I highlighted. God has departed from me. He no longer answers me either by prophets or by dreams. All right, so on that, it's like the Lord will never forsake us or leave us, right? But I think this is different because he's a he's anointed. Like this is a special guy right here. Like God actually anointed him to do certain things and to to follow him wholeheartedly, and and he disobeyed that. So God no longer answers him. So it's like God never leaves us or forsakes us. That's true. But this guy right here, this guy was anointed. He this is this is not a regular person. So. I don't know that I just seen that that interesting because God has departed from me, and then in, in other scriptures it says the Lord will never leave us or forsake us. So that's like contradicting, but there's a reason for that. This is a this is a different per, different type of person. This guy was talking to God, and God told him to do certain things, and he didn't do it. So you no, know? it's just something I found interesting. So I have called on you to tell me what to do. Samuel said, Why do you consult me now that the Lord has departed from you and become your enemy? The Lord has done what he predicted through me. All right, under my likes, I highlighted. The Lord has departed from you and become your enemy. The Lord has done what he predicted through me. The Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hands and given it to one of your neighbors, to David. Because you did not obey the Lord or carry out his fierce wrath against the Amalekites. The Lord has done this to you today. Alright, under my likes I highlighted. Because you did not obey the Lord. See, he didn't. He's anointed and he disobeyed, he, he disobeyed the Lord. So that's why he cut him off. But this is Saul. Saul. The Lord will deliver both Israel and and you into the hands of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. All right, under my questions, I highlighted, the Lord will deliver both Israel and you into the hands of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. All right, so he's dead, so it says, be with me. So so he's saying that Saul and, <clears throat> Saul and his sons are going to die, and they're going to be with Samuel. So I, I highlighted under my questions because where are they going? Where do they go after death? You know, that's a big question, but they're going to be with Samuel, who's dead, talking to them. So uh, that's a crazy question. Where are they going after afterlife? The Lord will also give the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. Immediately, Saul fell full length on the ground, filled with fear because of Samuel's words. His strength was gone, for he had eaten nothing all that day and all that night. When the woman came to Saul and saw that he was greatly shaken, she said, Look, your servant has obeyed you. I took my life into my hands and did what you told me to do. Now please listen to your servant and let me give you some food so, that, so you may eat and have the strength to go on your way. He refused and, and said, I will not eat. But his men joined the woman in urging him, and he listened to them. He got up from the ground and sat on the couch. The woman had a fattened calf at the house, which she butchered at once. She took some flour, kneaded it, and baked bread without yeast. Then she set it before Saul and his men, and they ate. That same night they got up and left. Alright, so that's a... 
That's a crazy read, right? Like, they talked to Samuel, who came from the dead. They talked to his spirit. His spirit was actually talking to him, a medium. So that means there's really people that could talk to the dead. Like, And like, well, if all this comes true, if Saul dies and everything comes true, that means that there's really people who could talk to the dead, or at least there was back in those days, people that could talk to the dead, mediums, spiritists, all that is real stuff. Like, And um, the difference between like somebody who just tries to predict stuff and an actual prophet is a, a prophet, you gotta wait. You, you'll never know a prophet until their actual words come true. So like, kind of like this, a medium talking to the dead and stuff, if this stuff doesn't come true, that means it was fake. But if this stuff comes true, that means that's a real medium. Like, they were actually talking to the dead. They were actually talking to Samuel's spirit. But, see, that's crazy stuff. God is good all the time, even when we don't understand. Amen.